Hello YouTube world, welcome back to the workshop. The project we're going to do this week is this big old chunk of beach. <coughs> now I've had this piece of beach skulking around the workshop for quite oh, a couple of years, I just think three years, something like that. Um, as you see there's quite a big crack one down through there. There's a couple of smaller cracks in there that I've repaired. There's one down through there. And I think what I will do is get that on the lathe. I'll probably turn that on the way because that will still give me quite a decent sized bowl. And I was thinking of doing like, like a pedestal bowl because it was so high. What I think I might do with it is actually turn a base on it and carve three feet on the bottom. And because it's so tall I think I can get away with that quite nicely. So that's the project I'm going to do this week. A bowl with three feet on the bottom. So sit tight and see how I get on. I've never done it before so it'll be a bit of a learning curve for both of us. So I've got the piece of beach set up in my lathe. I've got a tenon on one end and I've got a revolving centre on the other. And the first thing I want to do is where the revolving centre is. I want to turn a recess in there for my jewels to go in. Now that is the biggest set of jewels I've got and I want them to fit in the bottom. And I want them to fit into the bottom because of that recess in there will be part of what will be forming my three legs. This was the centre of the tree just in there and you can see there's quite a few radial cracks coming out from there. I put some super glue in there at one time or another but this is the worst thing. I think I'm going to have to turn that down to around there somewhere to get rid of that which would also take away a lot of that. So that again, it's like I've said before in other videos, if you cut this wood too close to the centre of the tree, that will always crack through the pith, through the cent central core. So ideally what I should have done was cut it off about there somewhere, and that probably wouldn't have cracked so quite so much. There is a quite big knot in there. be interested to see if that's the end of it or the beginning of it. So let's get into some wood and we'll see what we get. I have set my calipers to a few millimetre inside, maybe a little bit smaller. First thing I do is just go in my quarter inch parting off tool. something this big I'd much rather prefer to keep the centre up but I've moved the centre out of the way so that I can get right in my chisel and I'm now just going to continue to hollow this piece out just a matter of coming in with the bowl gauge it's only the same as hollowing a normal bowl so if you went in except for this one I've already cut the outside of the rim I wanted to keep the sides of this nice and straight while I went in there with my parting off chisel so that when I went in my large jaws in expansion mode I would have something nice and firm to hold on to. So we just continue to hollow it out. As you turn this wood away when you get to the desired depth this actually needs to be convex so it needs to be thrown out because this will form the actual bottom of the bowl this is why I've gone in with my skew chisel, just to give me a nice convex edge. I think I would struggle to get in there with an ordinary bowl gauge. So the recess in the bottom has been completed, and now that just leaves is the turning of the outside of the bowl. So I need to take some of this wood away 
because what I need to do is start forming a foot or what will form the feet. So what I want to do is leave a ridge on the bottom and it will almost take on the form of if I was turning a something like a pedestal bowl. So I just want to work this away. Just gradually work this wood. As you see, I'm just using some pull cuts here, almost in shear mode. This is a very effective cut for removing a great deal of wood very quickly. You can see in this shot, I've gone in my digital vernier calipers and I've measured the depth of that recess in the bottom. And what I want is for the foot on the outside to be the same depth or just slightly bigger because as that bowl curves round and I take the feet away I want the bottom of the bowl and the recess to be the same curve as the outside of my bowl that is there now so that needs to be quite accurate what I'm doing now is I'm just starting to shape part of the foot And that will just form so that's pretty much my foot and the shape of the bow defined so now I just want to turn that round take some of this away with all these probably down to there somewhere so I lose all of that not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. It's quite loose in there. I think what I'm going to do is turn that around, turn it off down to there somewhere, and then before we start hollowing it, I'll fill that with some two part epoxy residue. I've remounted that back in the lathe. I've turned it around. I've got my biggest set of jaws on the back in expansion mode inside of there. I'll get back to you when I've done it. I think this is going to be quite a long job. So I've taken that down. As you can see, that's just the edge of that, the pith there. But I've got quite a few cracks in there running through there. It's quite a big one coming through there, you can see. Another one down there, a couple of small ones there, one there. And that is on the other side of the wood. One there, one there, one there. The same, still radiating out. And that is very loose. The other thing that's concerned me somewhat is the fact that that crack does run right the way through the middle. It's not too bad on that side, but it's quite big on that side. I think the worst thing is this, because it comes right the way around there, and you can see a fake line of it that just runs around the outside of that bowl. And I'm worried that when I turn that away, there's not going to be much support in that, and that may come flying off. But I think I'll have to worry about that when it happens. I've sanded that down, I've filled the cracks with sawdust, unfortunately you can still see them, they're still quite, uh, quite prominent but they are all filled and glued, I've filled and glued that one as well, and I've only sanded that at the moment and I've got a fantastic shine on there already, but I'm just about to put sand and sealer on and some wax, and we can see what it comes up like. Beautiful. It's shine on that already. I don't need to put any wax on there yet. Look for some wax.
Beautiful shine on that. And this is why we turn wood. Absolutely beautiful. So that's it, so it'll finish, it's all waxed and polished. Very nice finish on that beach where that wood is so hard, it does polish up really well. So now to get to hollow in the bowl. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a f this big forstner bit down through the middle, but I need to be really careful because I've got a really deep recess on the other, other end of this bowl with feet cam. So use that in there for two reasons. One, that it's easier for me to set my depth using this, um, so I don't become a member of the funnel club. Um, and also where that beach is so very hard, turning that middle away, it's a lot easier if you've really turned that middle away to the force in a bit. It's exactly 18 mil deep, so now we can start to hollow. Continue to hollow the bowl now. Just a series of pull strokes and push strokes just until I take all the wood away. I did this wood was so hard, it was unbelievably hard. I really spent more time sharpening my chisels than what I did actually turning wood, I think. And I don't know if that's because the wood's been sat around in the workshop for so long, it's hard enough or it's got dry but um, I've turned beach before and I've never turned anything as hard as this before but the finished article was well worth it because I did end up with a lovely finish to it as you see there that knot continued to come through and I had to address that later on as well as those cracks they were to be cut out with the Dremel filled sanded i just used a mixture of sawdust and super glue just to fill them you see now i'm gradually working my way down i'm getting very close to the end shape or the desired shape that i want inside but it was very satisfactory turning this bowl i really did enjoy doing it well there's a the bowl all finished there's that big knot in there Zoom in on that. So I filled that, filled up some sawdust and some super glue. And there's also a couple of big cracks through there that I filled. So here is the bottom of my bowl. Now I'd wished with hindsight that I'd marked three 
equidistant points around there. When I had that, still had that wood because I would have had the center there and I could have used that to, with my dividers. But, so I need to find three equidistant points around there. So, I'm going to try to narrow my calipers for so just one, two, three, and then back to the starting point. So, that is there. There. That one there. And what I'm going to do is make my feet about. 30 mil wide. So that's where my three feet will come. All of this wood in there now needs to be taken away. Around there. And what I have is a very good tool that I use for carving, which is this. This is a chainsaw on the grinder. Now that rips wood away at quite an alarming rate and I would hate to get my fingers in the way of that. And if you wanted to do that, I mean a fret saw, you could go in there with a fret saw just as easy. That would take it away. Something like a wood rasp, that would do it. So the first thing I need to do is clamp that piece of wood down because I don't want that moving. And I certainly don't want to get my hands anywhere near that blade. So here you see I've got the bolt clamped to the bed of the lathe. And I've given him my chainsaw stroke grinder uh, and just taken it away. I was very impressed with this tool. You can take some very fine cuts with it. You can be very, very delicate with it. But at the same time, it will rip away a lot of wood very quickly. It is a very good tool to have if you do a lot of carving. So what I'm doing now is just roughing everything away. And just getting rid of the bulk of the wood. Next time going in, I have a Proxon Swarm Neck Grinder, and I have a burr set in the end of this, which will just go in and do the finer detail work. So it just takes a little bit longer, just to take all the wood away and just get it down. And you see, as I'm coming through now. You can see the transition between that inner bowl and that outer bowl and um, where it was so important that I measured the depth that they've now married up quite nicely. There is quite a bit of thickness in that bottom rim so I guess you would have quite a little bit of wood to play with. But that Proxon just cl did clean it up very nicely. So now that's all rough down, what I'll come in with next is a sanding pad, this is an angle drill. And this will go in and it will just move, remove any scratches, any lines, and then that can give me a smooth transition from the side of the bowl into the base of the bowl. But I will, at a later date, once all three feet are done, I will come back and I'll sand all of that by hand with the grain of the wood, just to give me a perfect finish. With hindsight, I wish I'd sanded and polished the bottom of there when I turned this, so that then I'd only have this piece left in to do. It's ten past five at night. I really think about what I'm going to do with those feet. I may leave them like they are. I might and carve them away and make something a bit more all night. I'll think about that overnight. It's back to my wedding cup. Well, there we go, YouTube world. Another project finished. A bowl with three feet. I've never turned anything like that before. Uh, quite enjoyed doing it. There's a lot of work finishing it all off by hand. In 
retrospect or with hindsight I would have polished all of this piece um, in the middle when I had it round that way on the lathe and had that still had that room on the bottom I would have sanded that down and finished that off so I would have only had the piece to do in the end I'm not too sure about those feet They're a bit big, I think I'll get away with that on that bowl because it is quite a big bowl. But at the same time, I'm very loath to do anything with them for the simple reason it is a very nice bowl. That beach did turn up nice. Very hard work to turn, and I'm frightened that if I do too much with those feet, I'm going to end up ruining the whole lot. So I think what I might do is turn on a couple of practice pieces, just put some feet on the bottom, and just uh, have a little play and see what I can do with them. Just see if I can carve something nicer on there. I don't think that'd look too bad. I think for the size of the bar, I think you need something quite, um, quite a bit bigger, just to carry it off. So, been quite a good experiment. As I say, it's the first time I've ever done anything like that. Very little I do different. Good fun project, really. Something different to do. Well, thank you very much for watching. There are some steals at the end of this. Uh, carry on watching. I've been Steve Ha, as always. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, because I certainly enjoyed turning it. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if there is anything that you would like me to turn in the future, please leave a comment in the box. I'm sure I'd be able to accommodate you. Thank you very much.